Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Longworth, and welcome to another edition of Triad Today. Coming up later on, our infamous roundtable, and we'll tackle lots of controversial topics, so stay tuned for the fireworks. Between now and then, some good information and great guests coming your way. We'll talk about global logistics. We'll talk about an environmentally friendly cafe. We'll tell you how the face of nursing is changing in our area, and much more. But first, we start the discussion about a drug program in schools that's actually working, and a lady who's written a book about how it's working, and a book that she wrote being used to help keep it working. And we'll explain all that. J. Paul, director next to me, is a very lovely Patty Sauvel. She's author of this book, which I'm going to hold up. It's called Under the Influence, The Town That Listened to Kids. We are referring to the town of Kernersville in this particular case is the model for this uh, happening. But your book chronicles the success of Kernersville Cares for Kids is a program that's going on. What is that program about? Well, several years ago, the school system instituted the drug testing program, and they instituted two legs, the voluntary and the mandatory. And uh, in Kernersville, when kids got a chance to voluntarily sign up, nobody signed up. Mm -hmm. So the superintendent challenged Kernersville to come up with some incentives. And within that, even before that challenge, though, I understand from reading your book that at one point a survey had come out that said, you know, when students were asked, and it said 92% said that students, 92% of students were doing drugs or had, had taken drugs. Well, and so what happened is, to get the ball rolling in Kernersville, we ask adults, what percentage of the kids do you think are using drugs? Adults said 10%. We polled the students, 92% of the kids said 70% of my peers are using drugs. So a big difference in how the adults and the and students And that doesn't were. surprise you, that there was a disparity, where the parents are sort of in denial. Yeah, it wasn't even parents, it was town leaders, everybody in Kernersville was in denial. And, and it's very, that's just a very important thing for communities to first start a program like this, getting on the same page, actually asking, don't think you know what the kids are thinking and what the other adults are thinking. So how do we get from that point to the point where Kernersville Cares for Kids gets started, and all of a sudden the kids who didn't used to want to take drug tests now say it's okay? How did we get from point A to B? Well, uh, Kernersville joined together. Uh, three entities came together, the newspaper, the superintendent of the schools, the police department, and they start giving the kids incentives. And the first line of incentives were T-shirts the kids got, got to create. So you're wearing your own creation. That's pretty cool. Sure. Then they started a competition between Glenn and East. See who could sign the most kids up. In the very first year, Glenn won 87% uh, of the kids signed up for voluntary drug testing. And here's the beauty of the program. Kids will not do this just for a T-shirt. No, the I was getting ready to say. Yes. Well, here's the beauty of the program. If you get off track, here's what happens. You get free help. So you fail the drug test. You get free help. Police are never called. Nothing goes on your permanent school record. None of your peers find out. You do all your normal classes, sports, extracurriculars, and you get this free help. Best of all, it was paid for by money confiscated from illegal drug sales. So it's like a win-win-win program. It was, it's, it's, it's like money being recycled, money that was used for the wrong reasons, being recycled for something that's the right thing to do. And I just think it's fantastic that we had not an enforcement emphasis, but a treatment emphasis for people that start to fall through the cracks and fall off that. Uh, has the program been successful in your mind, do you think? Oh, absolutely. The beauty of the winston southern Forsyth County Schools is that they actually tracked the information. So they would do tests. They would see, is this working? So in just a matter of some kind of uh, uh, placating the public by saying we put something in place. One of the most interesting finds was that uh, kids pledging has no power. Kids are like little politicians. They'll tell you whatever you want to hear. Oh, exactly. Yeah. But when the testing went in place, so the kids pledged for three months, everything, all the violations at the same level. Three months later, the testing went into effect. Drug violations dramatically decreased oh because Lord. now kids are being held accountable. It's like you and I. We respond to accountability. Yeah, I'm never accountable. Ah. Uh, the, now, the school, this is another great thing because I want to keep plugging your book here and, and understand, folks, that proceeds from the book go to help this program. So it's not that, you know, Patty's trying to go out on a book tour and make a million dollars for herself off the book. Uh, but the, very quickly, the school has adopted this in their PE courses, which I think is going to help. Uh, can, I guess my last question to you very quickly, um, can this work anywhere? I believe so. Uh, now, every community is going to have to 
uh, do their own, get their community on board, and, and come up with a program that works for them. But absolutely, free drug testing for kids is absolutely a wonderful idea. On screen right now, of course, we thank the good folks at Capital Bank, and their website is up screen there, so you can uh, see all the great things being done at Capital Bank, and they do care about organizations and events like this. Under the Influence is available also uh, through the school system right now, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Patty, thanks a lot. Will you come back and keep us posted? I will. All right. Thank you, Jim. Be right back after this.